everyone, so in today's video I'm going to be doing a Q&A video. Um, some people have asked me to do one and I put something on my Instagram story. Dallas, she's moving the tripod. So that people can ask me questions and I saved 10 of those questions that I'm going to be answering in this video today. Dallas is just right here laying on the ground. She's not feeling too well today. So question number one is, do you suggest owner training or getting a program trained dog? So I can only speak for owner training because that's all I have ever done. Dallas is the first dog that I've ever trained as a service dog. Um, but I do think that there are pros and cons to both. Um, definitely a pro for owner training is you growing a special bond with your dog you get them when they're eight weeks old and you're working with them that whole time um definitely with program training a big con is you don't really know what your dog is going to be like until you get them um i know that there is a program in kind of my state um, and somebody got a dog from this program they spent a ton of money they put their trust die into that program and their dog's just not that well behaved um so that's one con to program training dogs um a pro is just you know if you're unable to they train the dog for you and a lot of programs really are pretty great hi Question number two is, what breed am I going to get for my next service dog? Um, so I actually, I wanted a German Shepherd for my first service dog, but I ended up getting a Doodle because I think that a Doodle is definitely a better option for somebody who's owner training for the first time. I think a, a German Shepherd might be a little more like stronger willed I guess I don't know harder to train I just I've heard that golden doodles golden retrievers labs and such are really good dogs for newer trainers to train um but yeah I'm going to get a German Shepherd as my next dog so my third question is what are my favorite gear shops so I have a few I'm um, sorry, I'm playing fetch with my dog. She wants to play. My number one favorite gear shop is definitely River Dog Gear, matched with Shepherd Snuggle Patches. Um, that's my absolute favorite. And I also like Banworth Designs. I've never gotten a vest from them, but I plan on getting one soon. Um, I also like Patchwork and Paws. They have really good patches and they make vests as well. So you definitely wouldn't have to like get patches from a different shop, have them shipped over because that just takes more time. Um, and I also like Patience and Love. So those are my favorite gear shops. Question number four is why did I choose a golden doodle over a purebred dog? So I actually... Um, I didn't really know that there was like a big difference between mixed dogs and purebreds and I still am not sure that's kind of like a, uh, I don't know, some people think that purebreds are easier and better to train and have a less risk of washing out. Um, I'm not sure if I believe that or not because I don't have experience with um, training other kinds of dogs. Dallas is all I know. Um, but I think that she worked out. I definitely didn't do it the right way. I went through a backyard breeder. Um, a friend of ours was breeding their golden doodle with another golden doodle. They were having puppies and I was like, hey, I'm looking for a puppy. So I got one of them and luckily it worked out. Question number five is a really good question and the answer is different for every handler and that is what is the hardest thing to train? So for me, the hardest thing with Dallas was um, teaching her to heal. Dallas was a very big puller. She liked to pull on the leash 
um, so that was difficult we got her a gentle leader which helps then we transitioned her to a prong now she works on either just a flat or a martingale um, and she does great actually now she kind of like walks too slow and she she kind of lags behind me a little bit and I don't know she doesn't have the greatest heel she doesn't really know the heel command she just knows hi are you trying to put that in my mouth she knows the general position um, that she's supposed to be in but yeah and also I think another hard thing to train is have your dog ignore other dogs in a store whether it be a service dog whether it be another reactive dog um that's definitely hard to train because it doesn't happen very often and you just have to use those experiences to work your dog through it dallas is not dog reactive at all she's just she likes other dogs you know so she oftentimes will stare at another dog if she sees one in a store um, she doesn't get too distracted if it's a service dog, but if it's a reactive dog, she'll normally want to sit down and watch it. She'll try to turn around to look at it as we're walking, and I'll just tell her to leave it. Um, but yeah. My sixth question is, have I ever dealt with an access issue? If so, how did I deal with it? Um, yes, I have had a couple access issues. I have not had very many, actually, luckily, but I have had a couple, and I think the biggest thing when dealing with an access issue is just knowing that you're not in the wrong, you didn't do anything wrong, um, just know that they think that they're doing the right thing, they truly just don't understand the laws. Um, you know how confusing the laws are so obviously somebody who's not in the service dog community and doesn't see service dogs every day they're not going to know the laws so it's our job to tell them the laws and we just have to stay calm and be respectful about it or else we're just going to we're going to get heated up they're going to get heated and it's just not going to it's not going to end in a good result so that's that's my advice for that So my next question is, what is my favorite and least favorite part about having a service dog? So my favorite part about having a service dog is just knowing that I have my dog with me all the time, even when I go somewhere by myself. And it's nice that when I do need her, she's there for me, she knows exactly what to do, and she helps me recover faster. So. That's my favorite part about having a service dog. My least favorite part about having a service dog is um, going places and all the attention that I get because I have a dog. Um, and I know that's normal, like people, it's not, it's not normal to see a service dog, so it's normal for people to look at you and talk about you and stuff. But sometimes it just gets old and when you're just tired and you're not feeling well and you're in a bad mood, you go to the store it's kind of annoying constantly having people compliment your dog and talk about you and ask questions and stuff. So that's my least favorite part about having a service dog. What is Dallas's silliest quirks? Um, so... <laughs> the most silliest thing that she does when she's working is if we're like, at a store and they have soft blankets, coats, or pillows. She likes to rub her face and her whole body on the pillows and stuff. One time I was at Marshall's <laughs> and I was standing somewhere, I was turned around talking to my mom and Dallas, when I turned back around, she is like completely buried in the coat racks. Like the coats are hanging, you know, and she's completely like submerged herself in there and she's like rubbing herself all around knocking all these coats down <sighs> that was you know I was upset in the moment but I look back at it and it was pretty funny but that's just one of her silly things about her whenever we walk by pillows I have to keep an eye out for her because she is going to want to play with them when did I decide that a service dog was a good choice for me my mom was the one who brought the dog idea up 
in the first place. Um, we weren't very educated on what service dogs were. We only knew about therapy dogs because therapy dogs were at our school. And I loved the therapy dogs all the time. Um, and when I went to treatment, my mom was wanting to get me a therapy dog. <laughs> Little did we know that therapy dogs were for other people. They weren't there for the handler and they didn't perform tasks for the handler. So when we did more research, we found out about service dogs and we looked into um, different service dog tasks that they can do to help somebody with an eating disorder. We looked at some people's just sharing their stories about how their dog helps them with their eating disorder. We kind of like thought about it, tried to figure out what could a dog do for me. Um, would this help me if a dog did it for me? And we also spoke with my therapist, um, and then we decided that a dog would be a good option for me since I do love animals. Animals have always had more of a calming, soothing effect on me, and I know that's not the point of a service dog, but um, I knew that I wouldn't mind having a dog with me everywhere, and in the case that I needed her, during a panic attack when I was eating, um, she would help make it more possible for me to eat at school in the lunchroom or even recover from a panic attack so that I can continue eating if I do have a panic attack, things like that. Later I did get diagnosed with POTS and she now helps me with my POTS as well. So yeah, that was the last question of my video. So I definitely hope y'all enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want me to do another video like this. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. Bye.